everyone it's been a very long time since I made a review for a video game and I've learned a lot in that time off so my reviews are definitely going to be much more professional while still keeping it on that casual side that I like and I hope you all enjoy them so without further ado this is a hack and slash game known as 99 nights this game came out back in 2006 and was made by Fanagram who had made the Kingdom Under Fire games for the original Xbox and those happen to be my favorite games for that system. And the other company that helped make it was Q Entertainment. They made the luminous puzzle games that I love so much. So that pretty much made me interested in this game alone. Plus it helped that I got this game for four bucks. So I said, oh, what the hell, why not? So this is the main menu. You can select to play the tutorial, which I only recommend if you have never played a hack and slash game before, mostly because if you have played them before, you'll end up familiarizing yourself with the controls in a matter of minutes. You can also select the library, which you can view either character profiles, mission results, and artwork. But the artwork and profiles cost points. How do you get these points? Well, you get them, I believe, from achieving higher ranks on your levels. So if you get like a rank S on a level, you'll end up getting more points than if you get a rank A or below. At least that's how I think it works. Most likely it is. Now when you first start the game, you only have one character out of a total of seven. Beating the game with that person unlocks more characters. And bear in mind, beating the game with one person does take around three to six hours. And all of the characters have their own storyline, which revolves around the whole good versus evil, or in this case, light versus darkness scenario. It involves both sides fighting for some powerful stone or something like that. The one thing that I notice is that sometimes it comes across as the humans being the bad guys and the orcs or goblins being the good guys. Because there is a moment where one of the human leaders goes around killing civilian goblins like women and children. And I don't think there really was a reason other than they're just the enemy, therefore they die. I honestly don't remember much else from the story. Probably because it really wasn't that memorable at all, or I just have a really bad memory. So let's talk a bit about the graphics. They aren't bad at all. They're definitely dated, but I don't know, I don't seem to have a problem with how they look. I'm sure that for when the time this game came out, the graphics were great, especially when it comes to the cutscenes. I think they look, to this day, fantastic. Now when it comes to the level design, every now and then the levels look a little plain and boring to look at, as if it's lacking something, for example the desert levels. Although it's alright, I can look past it because there are other levels that are really well made and have a great layout, so in a way it kind of balances it out. The only main issue I have, and this tends to happen often with games where there are too many enemies or explosions on the screen at once, the frame rate will slow down and it's very annoying. This happens in Dynasty Warriors, Way of the Samurai, and other hack and slash games like that. It's a common thing, but still a little frustrating. Also, there seems to be little graphical glitches from time to time. For example, let's take a look at the girl named Epar. That's what makes me so lovable. Uh, Epar, that, uh, that, that symbol, is that? Yes, the brand of a slave. I'll never forgive those orcs. So that's what you meant by settling the score. Yes, exactly. I have sworn revenge, and will start again. F.R. <laughs> you and I live in different worlds, Mephi. I'm a scarred woman. <laughs> I don't really think I need to explain what's going on here. That being said, I really like the main character models and how different they all look. Sometimes the soldier models confuse me though. What I mean is, there has been a couple moments where I'm not sure who the enemy is, so I'll just go around trying to hit whoever I see just so I can find out. But this has been pretty rare. Now the sound in 99 Nights is decent. 
there has been some levels where the music is great and others where the music is really very not good. There's something really weird about the music too, and I don't know what causes it. But sometimes the music just stops, then reappears 30 seconds later. I originally thought it was because I was out of combat and I guess the music doesn't play or something. Then I thought it was because of the cutscenes that take place during a level sometimes, stopping the music. But it couldn't be those, since when I kept playing it just seemed to come at random. I don't know, it's just really odd. Also, the voice acting is not great. In fact, it's a little below average. But I've heard way worse voice acting before, so this one doesn't bother me so much. Wux! Ugh! They think they're so smart! I'm sure there are going to be people who enjoy the acting, and others who will think it's abysmal. But oh well, at least it's not as bad as Trouble Witches. This is it! I'm safe! Okay, let's go, Taurus. The town is waiting for a new sheriff. What the? What's going on? Now let's talk more about the gameplay in 99 Nights. Well, let me just say this first. The game does not have a thing where you can select a difficulty, so it can go from really easy to ridiculously hard very quickly. And this could be a problem for more of the casual gamers or people who have not played a hack and slash game before, maybe even children. Uh, there were times where I had a good amount of health and a boss hit me one time and I died. And this was at the end of a level I took 20 fucking minutes to do. So needless to say, I was very pissed off that I had to replay the whole damn thing over again. But regardless of that, I really enjoy the combat in 99 Nights very much. It gives you a lot of variety in a hack and slash game, unlike some others where it feels like you're doing the same moves over and over. When you level up each time, you unlock more moves. So, for example, let's say you have a combo of X and Y. Then, the next level, you'll get something like X, then Y, then X again. There's such a variety of moves that your character can perform, and each character has their own completely different moveset. So everyone is different, and you can eventually find out which character you like the most. Speaking of that, my favorite character so far has been the little goblin dude, I can't pronounce his name, or really anyone's name in this game for that matter, but I really love his moveset. He moves faster than the other characters it seems, and his attacks are very quick and powerful as well. And he has the only voice actor I think is really good in this entire game. I love that you can replay the levels over again to try to get a higher rank or find some new weapons and items. This is also good for when you are struggling on the later levels and you just need to level up your guy so it makes it much easier. The red orbs that appear when you kill an enemy collect at the bottom left, and when you fill up that red bar you can use I think it's called an orb attack by pressing the B button. Now the other orbs that come out when you kill people while using the orb attack go to a completely different bar which is blue. And when that fills up you can use a very powerful attack called the orb spark. I tend to save this attack for when there's a shit ton of enemies, because it usually takes them all down at once, except bosses which it just injures them, of course. You can also equip items that do all sorts of things, like increase health by whatever amount of percent, same with damage, defense, and there are other wacky ones as well. And I believe you can get these items by either killing enemies that'll drop it randomly, or just by going around the levels trying to find treasure chests, and those will have items or weapons in them as well. Now even though I really like this game, I do have some complaints that I feel should be addressed. First being, you move incredibly slow. Probably the slowest I've ever seen in a hack and slash game before, unless you're playing as the little goblin. 
Now when it comes to fighting the enemy bosses, a lot of the time you know you're swinging right at him and the weapon is going straight through him. But you aren't damaging him at all, to the point where the enemy doesn't even react to your attacks. And that's very annoying. It's as if the enemy only gets hurt when they feel like it, but this doesn't seem to happen on normal soldiers, so I'm not sure why this happens. Another problem is that your soldiers that you can have with you are absolutely useless. The archers seem to fire all over the damn place, and I don't even think they hit the enemy most of the time, and your foot soldiers are just kind of there. Almost like meat shields, I mean, they'll attack, but it feels as if they're not doing much at all. The only commands you can order your soldiers to do are to follow and wait. I wish they had more options that you can tell your soldiers to do, like defend a friendly unit or go attack a specific enemy for example, but they don't. Another thing I really don't like is that there isn't an in-game save, so that when you have to go, you can't just save it and come back later to finish it off, you have to play through the entire level, which sometimes takes up to 30 minutes before you can save anything. And now for my final thoughts. Well, 99 Nights is a damn good game. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it's not for everyone. It's mostly for people who enjoy and are fans of hack and slash games. I don't recommend it for those whom this would be their first hack and slash game because it is pretty damn difficult and I think it would make the player frustrated and not want to play it again. Now for the people who are more experienced with these kind of games, I do recommend at least trying it out, it's cheap as hell now. I got mine for 4 bucks, so it's easily worth that to me. I also heard that there is a sequel to this game, so maybe one day I'll review that game as well.